all of Saturday Night Live starts wobbling like this, right? <laughs> and, and, and the stage manager, stage manager comes over and he goes, you're not doing that again. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. Fall Out Boy's here. Yeah! Yeah! Thanks for coming, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to be here. Bye. Is it good to be out with a new album? Is, it, is oh, this yeah. what is life still fantastic when a new album comes out for the members of Fall Out Boy? Oh, yeah. I mean, a little bit of anxiety putting That's out scary. new music. But, yeah. Why is it scary? You guys, I mean, I'm sure, look, I don't mean to, like, say you don't have a right to be anxious <laughs> about this, but... You have been around pumping out some amazing music and great concert for so many years. You still got the get the butterflies. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, I, I don't know. I think you, um, I don't know. You put a lot into it, and you really want people to. You want it to resonate with people. You want you know. You were feeling something when you made the record. You want to help you know hopefully connect with people and have them feel something too. And you know it's totally possible. I used to work at a used record store, and the the key thing was it was the used record store. So it was the records that no one wanted, you know. And um and there's a lot of big bands in there, you know. <laughs> so so it was definitely a lesson for me that like you can put out a dud, you know. And and um I always I'm always scared. I'm like, is this the one that's going to end up at record surplus? You know. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the saddest interview we've ever had. <laughs> Well, no, it's just, I think that's something that drives me is like, is trying to make, trying to make sure that it's not that, you know, trying to not just coast on like, ah, somebody will probably like it, you know. Well, I know, but eight albums in, this is eight, number eight, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Patrick, is your mom still asking you when you're going to go back to school? <laughs> I mean, I think she would be happy if I did. When you growing up, I think she, you know, she's she's proud, but she would definitely be a little excited if I if I said so. I applied, you know, like whatever. She would be pretty happy, I think. But. Wow. So with Pete and Andy and Patrick from Fall Out Boy in the house, we were talking about so much for Stardust, which is out today. We're going to play some music in a couple of seconds. Um, but I think back to all the years that we've known each other. You guys have come to Z100 into the show. And how we've all changed. We're not the same people we were eight albums ago. <laughs> there were mornings that you guys would come in, and I would be more drunk than you were. <laughs> right? So what's so backstage? I know you you guys are kicking off the tour in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Excitement, but backstage is a little different today than it was three or four albums ago. Like, how has it changed mechanically backstage at one of your shows? Um. Well, I think that we. You know, when you're playing uh, like a, like that shows at Wrigley Field, so you're playing a baseball stadium, so that means there's a lot of people that you don't want to disappoint. So taking it seriously, you know, like I, I think we've always taken it seriously, but obviously we're like a punk band, so we kind of used to thrash and play our songs as fast as possible. And uh, we definitely appreciate that there's people that like this is a big night for them. And <laughs> I'll tell you the exact difference. One time we played Saturday Night Live, uh, and the and during rehearsal. Um, because this was just who we were. Everybody's jumping off the walls and stuff, and the entirety, I didn't know this, all the sets are interconnected, right? So all of Saturday Night Live starts wobbling like this, right? <laughs> and, and, and the stage manager, stage manager comes over and he goes, you're not doing that again. <laughs> like, oh, um, please but, don't do that. This is like basically paper mache. Yes. <laughs> but, oh, no. but it was that kind of like, I feel like we were so green and so like, you know, just, hey, we're going to come in and do our thing. And, and over time, you start to learn how to like adapt to a situation and adapt to like, okay, if we can't jump off the wall, what can we do here? And, and I think that's kind of, you know, who we are now is like, I think we've been so many places and seen so many weird things. And now it's like, you can figure out how to do the show without knocking over the entire set. You know what I'm getting here? though is you're still excited you still have the jitters like, like you had back in the day and that's exciting it you know there are a lot of people who go through their careers their lives and it, it's they, they're looking for a soft landing it's done and like, <laughs> we've done what we needed to do we saw what we needed to see we ate and drank what we needed to eat and drink you guys still seem like you're excited to be in the game and making your music i mean i think this album in particular like we're definitely very excited about you know i think it took us a long time to make it you know maybe almost five years since the last one. But, um, yeah, you know, I think we had a new appreciation for each other and the band and whatever coming out of the pandemic, you know, as everybody did. I think you appreciate things that you weren't able to do. And so, yeah, this record we're pretty excited about. When this first started, did you guys think, yeah, we're going to eight – We'll be here eight albums from now. Like, <laughs> I didn't think what we were, were your be... thoughts at first? I, so I keep saying this, and, and it, it kind of gets like swept away, but but both of these guys were in bands that were like touring 
at the time. And to me, that was like, you know, well beyond my wildest dreams, right, of ever, you know, I'm never going to tour. So so to me, I was like, there's no way that this is going to be anything other than a side project for them. So like, don't take it too seriously. So I didn't, so I didn't really, I, I was like, I'm having fun, but like, you know, they have real stuff going on. So um, I kind of didn't expect it to last the summer, you know, but, <laughs> but I can see into the future. So I knew. Wow. <laughs> true. Perfect. Somebody needed to. Precisely one day into the future, yeah? yeah one day. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> Are you guys touring differently now? Do you know each other, keep away from each other, or spend a ton of time together? How does that work? Yeah. Um, All that, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, <laughs> seriously. No, I mean, I, yeah. yeah, we know, you know, when to stay away. We, we still hang out. We, like you know, go to movies together, get food together sometimes, but then also have our times, our supper times and... You know, one of the things family. I think is funny is is the way everybody expresses anger, right? Or like, or not, not like, not like freaking out anger, but like, you know, just when you're frustrated about something. I think it took a long time to understand that, you know, where like now it's like, you know, it's like, oh, is Pete mad at me? It's like, oh no, he's frustrated with something. Like you can kind of, you know, whatever. Now it's like this unspoken thing where there's not a lot of like, there's not a lot of like where you leave the room like what was up with him like you kind of get you kind of know what the vibe is you kind of know what everybody's feeling it's kind of intuitive now you know after 20 years yeah 20 years <laughs> yeah. It, uh, to the grave that was yeah. the first one that was the first album mm -hmm. 20 friggin years ago yeah um but you're still here you're still doing it and uh, i'm sure there's you know we, we could make a list of the bands that didn't last five years seven years and uh, but they had a great run mm -hmm. you're still doing it um, and so some things are different. Some things are the same. Like, what what are you liking more about being Fall Out Boy today than 15 years ago? I mean, I like that the time we live in, um, you know, we were always a band that kind of bent genre and stuff. And the time we live in, like, you know, my, my kids, they, the way they listen to music, it's very all over the place genre-wise. And so I think it's it's really freeing as an artist. It's really nice to be able to make music and not really have to think like oh this we're not allowed to do this or this isn't going to work you know you can kind of at this point in time do anything you know and as long as it's authentic to you i think people will give a shot give it a shot you know pete you've always been in, in my mind someone who always kept your eye on pop culture what what the kids want i hate to say it that way yeah. do you <laughs> listen to your kids i mean do they say dad i no you guys um, need to rethink how you're doing this they give a lot of feedback in general. <laughs> is it even valid or is it all just you're like just shut up? No, no, no. I think it's I think it's all valid. It's so interesting when you hear someone else's perspective, you know, and or, or somebody who has such a different perspective who doesn't like go like, "Oh, this could be related to all these other bands because they're they, they're like free of all that stuff." So like, yeah, in in some ways I I really appreciate it. I don't I I you know, I, I don't take all of the advice. Like I don't let them a and r all of the songs yeah. but like they're pretty good at it are they do they think you're cool no. like are, they don't yeah that's always the way no. man you kids never think you're i think cool. you guys are i still think you're cool that's Thank awesome you. <laughs> Thank I'll, you. I'll happily adopt you see the old guy <laughs> <laughs> so when you're when you're up on the stage you're doing a show actually when's the last time you did a show when's the last time uh, like we week ago? Week? We, oh. we played some small shows in oh, okay. Europe last week. So when you look out in the audience, it's a different audience than 15 years ago, 20 years ago as well. What are you seeing mm -hmm. out there? What do you see? Who is loving Fall Out Boy from the audience weird perspective? Stuff. <laughs> weird, wild stuff. Weird, wild stuff. That is uh, that is wild stuff. Um, I feel like we <laughs> see... Um, that's that's <laughs> the best Johnny Carson <laughs> I've ever heard. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I feel like and we... Um, <laughs> Uh, I feel like one of the things that's weird as you get older is, you know, um, when we would look out the audience when I was, you know, 24 or whatever, the audience would be you know, definitely contemporaries. Now you have this like, you know, older brother, maybe parental thing where, you know, when people f start to fall over, I mean, you were always concerned about it, but now you're really concerned because you're thinking about like, oh, oh goodness, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's much more, it's much more paternal where you're like, I, I hope they're okay, you know, don't break something, you know. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's definitely a different show from that perspective too, because you really want, you, you always wanted to take care of your audience, but now you, it's like this other level, you know. Well, back in the day, you'd go into a Fallout Boy uh, dressing room, and God only knows what party things you would find on the table. Now it's like Tums. <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off. <laughs> do, you, do you guys sleep more now? Do you feel like you know you party less, sleep more, or no? Oh my yeah, goodness! I bring a sleeping bag, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like I, I, I don't. 
I think I sleep so much less now than I ever used to. Yeah, um, uh, I don't know. I feel like with kids and yes. and you know, I resp- I'm also kind of I'm a little bit of a workaholic. So so when I'm not on stage, I'm doing other things. So like I I need to relax a little bit. I think. Do you feel like when you're on the stage or in the studio, you're a kid again? I mean, is that part of the magic that keeps it rolling? I mean, there's definitely some transformative experience on stage when the four of us play that always feels similar to me. And and to your you know to your question about the studio too, I think this record specifically that was one of the things that was so exciting about it was that we got to be back in. And it's so funny, Neil Aaron is 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 so meticulous and so fastidious that the studio looked exactly the same. You know, it was, we haven't worked with them since, what was it, 2000? We recorded it in 2007 or something like that. And, and you know, the upholstery was still in the exact same shape. Like, he took care, like, the place looked spotless. So so it was crazy to be back. It was like going, you said it was like going back to your, you know, childhood home or something and, like, hanging out with your parents, but now you can drink. <laughs> like the basement yeah. at mom and dad's house. <laughs> exactly. The smoke-filled basement. Yeah. But being together for 20 years, these life lessons that you've maybe you're conscious of or not, if you can think of any, like people listening to Fall Out Boy interview right now, like, oh, my God, I just heard Pete give us one of his favorite life lessons he's learned in the past 20 years. Can you pinpoint any of those? I mean, I think, especially with this record, I think a lot about, like, um, mortality and, like, the existential dread that goes along with that and I think that that for me that can be like paralyzing it makes me want to do like absolutely nothing but I feel like life is short so you have to do a lot of stuff you got to make a lot of friends you got to do crazy things you got to um make art or you know whatever it is you you have to do things and I think that's important right anything, anything else heavy. to add to that that was, that was a heavy answer <laughs> um uh life lessons are not meant to be Light. Taken lightly. Yeah, that's a good point. I think, uh, okay, this is kind of a heavy one, but it's true. Um, don't WebMD it. Uh, <laughs> go go see a doctor. Right. Don't try and diagnose it yourself. Because you're uh, always dying when you WebMD Yes, exactly. It. It, it, it's self-surgery, <laughs> bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. I've, I've read that, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> I read that on WebMD. It's not a great idea. But, uh. Another cool thing about being in this business and being a little older than than you were, which doesn't make any sense, <laughs> um, is you're, you let yourself off the hook faster. You mm-hmm. actually, it's okay to talk about mental health. It's okay mm-hmm. to talk about how you're feeling. And these are all the, the good things that are happening today versus 10 years ago. It's, you know, we're, for instance, Joe, right, mm-hmm. is taking mm-hmm. a mental health break right now, and you guys have been very vocal about it. How's he doing? He's is good. He, he's I, doing well? Yeah, I talked to him yesterday. It's, it's, I think it's tough for him because he knows that he has to do it, but then he also, like, hates not being here you know so it's so it's i think it's difficult for him but um you know but it's also i think he needed it and it, it, it's always great to check in with him because he's you know i think he's just so excited to get back to it you know? oh, i bet but i know but when you know there's, there's a tour ahead of you mm-hmm. and you all, you all know what a tour is all about mm-hmm. i can see like hey you guys you go talk to Elvis in the show. I'll, <laughs> I'll call you next week. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll see you guys later. No, I get it. <laughs> Does social media affect you guys the way it affects us? Because I know that you know, 20 years ago, obviously wasn't the same as it is right now. And we'll have great days and get a lot of positive feedback, and then we hear one negative thing, and that's what we think about all day. Oh, and I can't course. imagine if it's the same for you or if you guys are just like in one ear out the other. That's a, I, I left. That was one of the reasons I left. I couldn't. It, it got. I mean, it was also you know. I think it just became this this wild place for a little while. Um, you know, I mean, not that it isn't now, but uh, you know, I, I I couldn't do it. It was too. And it's also one of those things where I'm one of those people. I you know I put it all into music, so you know I can't really communicate through other things. So. So it's the gateway to hell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of, I mean, yeah. look what they're doing to your music. You on TikTok, you know, they're they're they, they can speed it up. They can they can change the tempo of your song. They can edit it, make it shorter. Like like the song links in TikTok. I mean, they're like a minute and a half. Yeah. I mean, they're remixing your music. Are you okay with this? I kind of think it's what? awesome. What? You think it's awesome? So yeah. I thought you would say that. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Anytime your art inspires other art, whether it's like memes or remixes or whatever, I think that's really cool. It's like d- discovery. I think, and TikTok in some ways to me, like rem- reminds me of like MTV in the 80s, where there was a bunch of bands and artists that like embraced MTV and embraced music videos. And there were some that were like, why do I have to make a video for my song, you know, or whatever. And I, I, 
it, if you use it as a tool and you use it as something that's another way to get your art out there, I think it's cool. Let's take it a step further. I saw a uh, story the other day with David Guetta. I don't know if you heard this story, mm-hmm. where he actually used AI and recreated the voice of Eminem, and he played a song to his audience with Eminem performing it. Eminem had no, Eminem had, Eminem had no idea it was he was on this song. And they asked David Guetta, I mean, do you feel weird just lifting someone else's voice and making people think it's him? He said, no, not at all. It's a part of music. We've been sampling each other for years. I'm, but the thing is, he wasn't sampling Eminem. He was creating Eminem. Are you ready That's for that? That's someone's ringtone? <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> it was like, whose ringtone was that? No, no, we're not, I'm not, we're not, we're not calling anybody out. I was, I was, that was just one of our song, our new songs. So I was excited. Well, she's a fan. Well, I don't know, but um, anyway, I, like I said, I'm, all, I'm just worried about the new. I'm always like, oh, I don't know if people like it, so that, that makes I me think happy. That, like the AI thing brings up all kinds of like gray areas. Like if you, we were talking about the other day. Like if you had used AI to create a Fall Boy song or create like your you guys show. Like what? Who? You know what I mean? Like who? Whose is that? Like is exactly. it is it authentic? Like I don't know. It it all seems like a little strange, and it's a strange way to use AI to me, at least. I think AI is interesting, and it's an interesting tool. But like there are things about um, about music and about expression that AI is just. Ne- I don't. I mean, this is going to be a bold prediction, but I don't think it's ever going to be able to figure out some of the idiosyncrasies. Like I, I don't know why I think about like Buster Rhymes, the row row like a dungeon, like that thing. How how are you going to program an AI to think that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, you could get it to sound like him. You could get it to, to have his cadence and his rhythm and stuff. But to have it be the... Because I think artists are often unpredictable. You know, it, it, you know, if you're just going on, you know, if you're just feeding data in and it's just, you know, an algorithm, it's going to... It's, it's predictive, um, but it can't predict those moments of inspiration because it's going to hit everybody in a different way. You know, I remember the first time I heard... Um, the Wyclef Jean song, uh, or it was, it was a Wyclef song where he sampled the, the Bee Gees. And I remember thinking, like, the Bee Gees? You know, like, but that, the fact that that was what inspired him, you know, was a surprise. And I think, I don't think an AI would figure that out. Well, let's revisit this question in 10 years after they've yes, replaced after they each replaced and every one of us. Yes, after they've replaced us all, yeah. That's fine. After. Great interview today. We did an interview? Yes. <laughs> Are there any um, songs you won't do in concert anymore? And I know we all have our favorites, but is there one that you guys are like, nope, we're never going to do that one again? No. We definitely play, um, I mean, we close every show with like this really old punk rock song of ours. And just when we were playing the small shows in Europe, we added some old ones in that we hadn't played in a long time. Yeah. So, no. I will say, I will say, and this is very, this is very, <laughs> very honest. If a song doesn't go over really well and it's really hard to sing, I'm like, we don't have to do that one, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to do Justify that. Justify it right off yeah. the list. <laughs> yeah. If it, like, if it doesn't, if it doesn't knock everybody out, I'm like, you know, that, that one, that one doesn't go over very well, does it? You know, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> oh, wait. Your impressions of the new album. It's out today so much for Stardust. What is this album about? Like, wh- wh- If you have to describe it, which I know you may hate doing that, how do you describe it? Sonically, what does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it taste like? Yeah, what does it, it taste it's del- like? It's delicious. It's a, um, uh, no, I think, <laughs> I think it's, um, there's something about, we made this record, uh, and I don't want to be too much of a tangent, but we made this record fully I do, uh, which was our last record that we did with Neil Avron. And it was very experimental and we were kind of just pushing things and you know, seeing what, what we could do. Um, but we as a band at the time were very fractured and very all over the place. And I had had this wanderlust to like get back in the studio with him now because we, we are a different band of people at this point. We get on so much better. We communicate better both uh, both interpersonally and musically. So I was like, I would love to see that again. You know, now that we, you know, and, and we've also learned so much. You said, Andy, you said it was like superpowers. We all have, we all have superpowers now. And it's like, what could that what be? That is what you said. I'm getting, yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I feel like the sound of this record is really just us actualized as us, you know, at the height of our abilities. At the, yes, the height of our power. I love the inspiration behind it. I mean, like, do you look forward to the ninth album? I mean, is it too early to even think about an album after this? I think it's too early. Um, I think that also with the, this, listen, like the, this is a record where 
we were able to kind of realize, um, oh, guitars are happening, and there's this fest happening in um, Vegas that has all, you know, like a similar thing, MGK, like all these things. And my friend was like, you guys should just do Sugar, We're Going Down Part 2. And I remember thinking, like, we we absolutely have to not do that. But we, <laughs> but we got to do something that's adjacent to something that reminds everyone of Fall Out Boy. And I think that with this, r- with this record, we've kind of blended all of the eras of Fall Out Boy together, which is something we've always had to do live. But like, th- this is the first time to me on an album where we did it. Well, I, I know we're going to play uh, Love from the Other Side in a f- couple of seconds. The first time we heard it, we were like, wow. Every time we hear a new Fall Out Boy song, I still get, I still get the, the same feeling. Oh. I feel good. I feel happy. I feel motivated to drive really fast in my car. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just, you're tremendous at what you do. And uh, we love that you're giving us good music. So, And we need better music to play, to be honest. <laughs> when I'm in the bathroom during a song, I need a good song on there. <laughs> <laughs> I need for the song to be better than anything I can come up with. And it always is. Fall Out Boy, eighth studio album is out today. So much for Stardust. Patrick, Pete, Andy, and of course, thank you so much for being on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having yeah, us. We'll see you in concert. <laughs> this is it. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.